Of course, the minute I decide I'm going to record something, the entire neighborhood is outside. Of course. Hello, and welcome to the Plies and Hellhounds channel. This is uh, my corner of the internet. We are a crafty puppy interrupted podcast coming to you from central Connecticut. I'm your human host, Gabby. You can find me everywhere online as Gabby Gales and all my hand dyed yarn at Plies and Hellhounds and pliesandhellhounds.com. This is episode 132, I think. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who uh, is coming back and sticking around with our very sporadic schedule. And hello and welcome. If this is your first time viewing, um, thanks for being here. This episode, we are going to be trying a new thing. I'm just going to be talking about what I have finished in the past couple of months. I don't have a ton of finished objects that I can share with you at this very moment, but I wanted to present them here before I forget about them entirely. Yeah, I'm gonna put links for everything down below in the doobly-doo. Um, so if you would like to find anything, it is down there. Uh, we're gonna start off with what I'm wearing, which is also an FO. This is the Pine Creek Crop. I keep calling it the Creep Crop, but I love it. Uh, this is by Samantha Guerin Designs. Uh, she did originally design the Pine Creek as a DK Way sweater with long sleeves, and then she reworked it this year to be a fingering weight crop top. And I love it. I mean, crop tops are me. They are, I am, I am crop top. So I knit this on my brandy new Selkie base, which is 85% non-superwash merino and 15% silk. And I am rethinking the colorway name on this so it doesn't have anything, but it is a cool steely gray with hints of orange, blues, and like a little bit of purple in there. Very subtle. I did knit the size two, which is a 35 inch bust um, for the finished garment. I am a 31 inch bust, so it's definitely more positive easy than what I usually go for. But the way it hangs, it's, it, it works. I love, I love the lace. I love the short sleeves. I live in this thing, basically. I'm going to have to knit another one, I think, immediately, actually. I used about 120 grams for this one, and the only change, Iron, I'm blocking that. Can you not walk on it? The only um, change I did to the pattern was I knit it one inch shorter than what she recommends, but I also have a very high waist, so I wanted to make sure it hit right at my waist. And I pair this thing with overdresses, underdresses, just the mini skirts, York pinafores. I mean, I'm pretty sure I wore a York pinafore like every day. I am a walking billboard for Helen's Closet's York pinafore. This also flew off my needles. The second it I got to like here, it just zoomed right by. I love it so much. The next knit item that I have finished is the Bennett Sister Shawl by Larkspur Knits, formerly known as Lost and Fond. And I, hold on, I have to pull my show notes. I love this shawl. This is my spooky prairie shawl of a misty morning dream come true. I think I'm having like a style crisis right now because all I want to do is wear moody grays. So I did the, what is this one? This is Narwhal Needlework, the Wanderers on her Ravenwood base, which is her tweed base. And then the second half, which I love this design feature, is Hugh Loco's Woodsy on her spun sock held double with Lavender Loon's Surrey Alpaca Rumor, which is what I used for the Alder Grove pullover, also by Samantha Garrett Designs. <laughs> I love this shawl. It has this beautiful stockinette detail that only took me 10 times to get because I can't read directions and I kept making it a straight line. But if you follow the directions, this is super easy to knit up. I love it. It's like the perfect size to not be a schlanket, but you can easily wrap it around. Hold on, my dog's sewing up. My life now, just every animal is getting sick one after another all the time. Put around small enough that you're not all shawl, and I love it. The pattern does have tassel instructions, but I ran out of yarn, so I did not make tassels. I think I would like them. 
I'm not sure. I haven't decided where I stand on tassels yet. I want to like them. TBD. There she is in all her beauty. I did end up um, having to use Fireheart for the last, I think you can see the change right here. But it's not that noticeable unless you point it out, especially in the video. So that is knit object number two. I have started a couple other things, but I will show you in the next episode I put out on what I'm working on, because I think I'm also going to go through my whip bin and just have a finish it or frog it party, because I need to go through that. Let me check on the dog one more time. The main thing that I wanted to do this video for is my sewing, the sewing FO that I did for uh, book club, basically the month of, was it May? What year are we? I don't know, May. We chose to do a Regency romance for our book club. So we did A Week to be Wicked by Tessa Dare. I thought it was good. It was okay. I don't think I would reread it, but I do enjoy Tessa Dare. I thought When a Scott Ties the Knot was much better than A Week to be Wicked. Yes. I, I mean, I love a good historical romance. So our plan was to go to Harkness Memorial Park in southern Connecticut and we had a Regency picnic. So we'll start from the bottom and work our way out. All of the patterns I used are from Sense and Sensibility. I will leave links down below. Great patterns. I believe most of them are PDF online and then you um, print them out at home. And they have really good instructions because everything's set up to be like copy shop printed, but they tell you how to do it from home so you can just tape them together. So I made all new everything for this, starting with the chemise. <laughs> I had grand plans to like do video and that. Ah, no, I'm too tired. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. I've been up since five. I've had one cup of coffee and it's a bazillion degrees outside. It's not happening today. <laughs> I will stand up though. No, I won't. So I made a new chemise. This is just a regular white um, cotton blend linen that I had in my stash. I used um, I think butcher's twine for the drawstring and I did add a little lace detail on the sleeve. The pattern calls for like a three-quarter sleeve or a long sleeve on the chemise but I have short sleeves on the dress so I just did a tank top style. I also made it a little bit shorter than the pattern. You're not gonna be able to see. If I take video, I'll put it in here. Honestly, I wore this as like a nightgown for probably two weeks. It's very comfortable. Like this is Regency Moo Moo status. 2021's coming up all comfort. So I made a new chemise, super easy, super quick. The next layer is the short stays. So I do have a bodice and two different kinds of corsets, but I wanted to do the proper undergarments for this dress so it fit properly. So I, same pattern, the Sense and Sensibility short stays. Here they are. Is this the outside? This is the outside. So I use this linen fabric that um, I got from my grandmother's stash. It's just a bin of random linens and linens and florals. So I use this super delicate like beige with the white embroidery for the outside. I did a size eight. It, I believe it starts at a six and it goes up to a 22. I did the size eight. I did the second small size with the A cup inserts because the bra cups are different inserts. So you can mix and match your bust measurement to your cup measurement, which I think is very good. I did uh, just regular linen on the inside. There is interfacing in it and I use plastic boning from a very old corset that I made years ago that I took apart when it fell apart and metal grommets and again the same butcher's twine. I do plan on getting better lacing eventually but this is what I had on hand. It fits really nicely. It's very comfortable. I I would wear these all the time. I think I'm going, I'm gonna try and make them, but with smaller straps. Yeah, cause these straps do go out very wide to accommodate for the neckline shape of the Regency period, but super comfy. Also super quick. I think this took me 
this took me a couple hours this took me like an hour with cutting very easy I did a size 8 on this but the chemise is a lot more forgiving in sizing so it doesn't need to be exact so undergarments done Barnaby is going to model the real FO the outside FO of this whole thing this is the sense and sensibility drawstring Regency evening gown uh, they have a wrapped version and the drawstring version I did the short sleeve drawstring version so you have two one two one two yeah so this has two drawstrings um, one in the neckline so you can adjust the other drawstring is underneath here to cinch in the waist so you still get the like empire waist that was very popular in the time without having to lace anything up it's super easy to get in and out of I did the puff sleeves which now that I'm looking at I think I put them on sideways but whatever it fit it fit nicely and then I added this lace trim that I also got out of my grandmother's basement with a snap on the side just to hide the drawstring casing um, I didn't press the drawstring before I put it into the dress because I finished this the morning of the book club meeting uh, so to cover that up I just added this guy just like that little little snaz little mini snaz I did the size 8 for this as well and you have an option of a gather or a pleat I did a gather in the back I'm usually a pleat girl but again press for time I <laughs> finish this the morning of book club and here is the drawstring I think I would make it a little bit bigger next time but whatever I also didn't finish the ends that's fine and yeah I this was such a fun dress it was such a fun book club to do I highly highly recommend um, getting a Regency dress or just a long skirt and then <laughs> running around a state park if you have them in your area because that was magical we did also almost crash a wedding but it is a wedding venue and a state park slash beach so I think the risk was already there when they booked the place and that is what I have been working on I again have some things from the last video the four aesthetics that I have started on so I'm hoping to catch you up on those when I get something done or I think I'm going to make a Rhinebeck plans video because New York Sheep and Wool Festival is happening in person as of right now. I bought tickets already. We've got our house booked. I'm going to Rhinebeck whether there's a festival or not. It's just a matter of will I also be buying yarn there. So I do want to make at least two or three new outfits to go. I'm not sure what's happening on Friday yet. I there has not been word. I need to go Saturday and Sunday that weekend. So I would like to do your Rhinebeck sweater for Saturday and then another sweater for Sunday. Yeah, that's been my making. It's not a lot of um, crafting. I'm still kind of getting into the swing of things again, but it, I, it's not a lot of crafting. It's a lot of reading and it's been a lot of Sims. I've made a lot of houses, a lot of houses. I've also restarted a lot of challenges. If you're interested in the sim stuff let me know I will share I will share that too I'm always ready to talk about the sims before I get into what I have been reading I do want to share the current mo full moon yarns from the wild in the woods 2021 full moon calendar um, I don't know if I've shown all of these yet on the podcast but we're at we're I'm opening six on Wednesday so I wanted to show you the five I'm, I'm not going to podcast again most likely until July which I'll get into later so we have the is this January January is the wolf moon followed by February whose name I forgot so I'll put it down below and then we have the worm moon which is March the Hello, JK. The, the pink moon, which is April, and the flower moon, which is May. So there we go. Uh, June is the strawberry moon. Oh, I'm losing all my little things. June is the strawberry moon, so I'm thinking it's going to be like a pinkish red. We'll see. I have an idea for a pattern. I think I'm going to stripe all of these in like a cropped three-quarter sleeve sweater. Yes. I think that's what I will do. I don't have a pattern picked out. I have a couple like that I'm looking at, but I'm waiting until I get more minis slash 
get some of the stuff I want to knit done and off the needles. So that is it for our, my crafting. The rest of this is going to be what I have been reading and what I've been up to. So if you're not interested in that, thank you so much for watching. And if you are, let us continue on. I'm a little bit all over the place. So last time I talked to you, I just finished Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Very good. Still highly recommend. So good. So I, I'm... <laughs> At that point I was reading A Crown of Gilded Bone by Jennifer, Jennifer L. Armentrout. I finished that. The middle third is a bunch of information and like repeat scenarios where they're just repeating this info. They are just driving this information through your skull. The last like 50, 70 pages was like that's when everything happened. I feel like I should have expected that from her. I feel like her first book was like that. Her second book just dove right in. This felt like a middle book. I do believe there's two more books in this series. I'm going to read them. I did order the hardcovers from Fairy Loot. I ordered them from somewhere. They haven't come in yet, but they're coming from the UK, so I know it's going to take a little bit. I have thoughts. I have feelings. I... Justice for Castile. That's all I'm going to say. Justice for Castile. Justice for... Kieran, like, just justice for Kieran, 100%. He needs, he needs his own book. After that, I did read Rules of Wolves. That took me a little bit to get into, and I think I figured out why. It's because I could picture now everybody in the story from what I had in my head to the TV show, except for Nikolai, because we don't have a Nikolai yet. So I think that's what was jarring to me. I don't want to say anything because I don't want to spoil anything for no anybody who hasn't read any of the books or seen the show or mostly read King of Scars so but I loved it. I loved it. As soon as I got into it it flew by. It was so good. I love her writing. I, I, I can't wait to see what else Lee does. I can't wait to see what they do with the season two. It's just that series is so good. It's so good. After that, I took it down a notch and I listened to Song of Achilles, which was beautifully written. It was just the audiobook I could have done without the guy trying to change his voice because he made Achilles sound like an old man for a lot of the time. But it was just, it was such a beautiful book. I cannot recommend it enough if you want to look up and find out that you were sobbing without realizing it. That was Song of Achilles. It hurt. I then listened to Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered by Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hardstark. This book came out a couple years ago and I was using Scribed to listen to A Week to Be Wicked by Tessa Dare. I had a free trial for like seven days and that was on it so I popped it on. It was really good. It was everything I expected it to be like part biography, part them talking about the podcast and like the love for true crime that a lot of women have and I am one of those women so it was just enjoyable. It took me like a day and a half to get through. Then I listened to Cinder by the <laughs> from the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer and this is a Cinderella retelling where it's a futuristic Beijing and Cinderella is a cyborg. It's very it was very good. It was not what I was expecting at all but I did not read anything up on the series when I started it. I am on the wait list for Scarlet which is book two in that series. It was just it was a very good fun you know the storyline premise so there was no surprise like I knew what to expect but like the twists were things that I really enjoyed. Uh, it hit a little bit hard because it does deal with it deals with an epidemic that like has been coming in waves so like that hit a little bit harder than it needed to but you know it's 2021. So now that that's out of the way, I did also pick up a book series that I saw on Book Talk. I want to preface this by I've read one of these books in 2019 when Heaving Bosoms did an episode on it. I will link to that episode here. Heaving Bosoms is a two best friends recap romance novels with cackling and snorting and just the best catchphrases and I didn't even plan it but they have it's called the Heaving Bosoms Geriatric Friendship Cult on it's their Facebook group and somebody made a mug of like all the sayings that they came up with on the podcast so obviously I had to buy a mug of that. Yes yeah, so I knew of the series because of Heaving Bosoms and then TikTok picked up on the series and I, I said haha let's read the first one for for gigs. So then I read Ice Planet Barbarians 1 through 17. I'm on book 18. <laughs> I started this like two... 
It's gotta be like two weeks ago now. I can't stop. I'm in it for the storyline. It is, uh, the premise is a group of women who have been kidnapped from Earth by aliens who are putting them on the black market as slaves get dumped on this ice planet because something's wrong with the ship and one of them goes out and discovers that there are seven foot tall blue aliens with horns and suede skin and to survive on this planet they need a kui or a kui which is a parasite organism that lives like in their chest that helps keep them warm and also helps heal them but also chooses them the perfect mate to have babies which I just herbs gloss over all that most of that because I'm not interested so it is <laughs> the first seven books are the original 12 women and then they the alien more women show up it's just now mm, there's so many I don't want to spoil it so I'm gonna put a timestamp. If you don't want like spoilers up until where I'm at, go to this time if you don't plan on reading all 22 books of my spin up periods. <laughs> it's fine, you can skip ahead. You can just skip this part if you don't wanna hear it. Yes, 12 women crash land. A couple books later, the aliens come back to retrieve them and they, uh, one woman takes down the ship, just kills all the aliens and discovers two more women. So then they have two more there and then at that point, almost all of the hunters, which are the male aliens, uh, all have mates except for five. So one of them, after a ship lands to do repairs, Beck uh, makes a deal with the captain of the ship that had to stop for repairs that he can keep whatever they want out of the other alien ship if they bring them back five more human females. They do, it's a whole thing. And then aliens that originally kidnapped the first group of women come back and try to kidnap some aliens and the women and so then they have to kill those aliens and they discover 20 new people four of which are alien men one of which is a dragon and that leads into her fire in the blood series i'm pretty sure and there's also another series called Ice Home where the aliens have four arms instead of two. So I think they're also in there. It's a lot. So right now we are um, slowly moving the new 20 people to their main village, which is called Croatoan because they discovered a city that was abandoned for thousands of years. And all that remained was like scribblings on walls, Roanoke, Virginia style. So that's where I'm at. I wasn't expecting uh, there to be this much plot, but Ruby Dixon knows how to write a storyline. She does it. She does it good. They're also very short books. It's like five to eight hour for audiobooks. And then the novellas are like 100 pages each. So <laughs> that's what I've been reading. I do have so many things that I want to read after this, including the rest of Darker Shades of Magic. I'm skipping the book club for this month because it's Stephen King and I'm terrified of things. So I have the book because my mom has all of Stephen King's books, but I don't think I'm gonna read it. I have to do some quick summer reads after this, not series. I want to do some quick standalones. So I would like to do that after this. We'll see. I'm trying very hard not to read Ice Home or Fire in His Blood. So that's what I've been reading. <laughs> oh no. Other than that, it has been The Sims settling into the new place. I've organized my craft space. I kind of have a flow going. The craft Joe is coming back. I am working on sewing on a skirt for next week. Next week I am driving to Florida to help my friend move because her and her husband are moving there and I'm really sad to see them go. I'm excited for this new journey for them. So I offered because I have a flexible schedule and need to get out of the state. It's been since October of 2019, since I've left, left the borders of Connecticut. So I'm driving down with them and their U-Haul truck and their dogs to Florida. But I am sewing a skirt to where we're gonna, we're hopefully gonna have one full day where we can just like relax. Um, their family is part of a beach club. So we're gonna do shopping for the house. We're just gonna hang out at the beach for the day and just kind of relax, have a nice mini vacation after hauling it down across the entire countryside and uh, then fly home 
for the 4th of July weekend. Yes, I think that's it. Again, it's been a lot of Sims. It's been Ice Planet Barbarians everything. What can I say? With that, oh, I have to go do all the chores I've been avoiding. Podcasting is the best way to do that. Thank you so much for checking us out. If you want to stick around, feel free to subscribe, hit the little bell icon to get notified every time we upload a video. I am aiming to do twice a month and kind of, I was gonna say weasel my way back into a schedule, but that's not the term. Work my way back into a regular podcasting schedule. So I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.